Hi everybody, this is Dino Chris from Prehistoric Facts. Uh, sorry that I couldn't actually be able to get this episode done uh, on Saturday or Sunday, because Sunday I actually got caught up on uh, talking to some, some people uh, on Skype, so basically um, working on a deal there, and basically, um, and uh, considering that how I've been uh, pretty ill lately in the, in the past uh, few days before the in the past few days, uh, I was actually not very feeling and wasn't feeling very good uh, to actually do the to do the episode. And so, pretty much, uh, because my throat was giving out a lot, and I'm pretty much I was coughing like crazy. But even though it's like with allergies and the cold, you know, it's pretty much like it's it's nuts. It's really really nuts. But anyway, let's actually get the special episode going, shall we? So we're actually going to be talking about two animals today. Uh, one is actually a marine reptile from the Cretaceous period and a very famous theropod uh, that we all know uh, from our specific movie franchise. And so let's start with the marine reptile, and that is Archelon. Archelon in Greek and Latin means ru ru ruling turtle, uh, found in the oceans of North America. Late Cretaceous, 75 to 66 million years ago. About 12 feet long and pri approximately weighing 2 tons. Its diet would basically pretty much be be squids, jellyfish, and maybe some fishes. Depends on what, what actually goes after. And of course, basically with Archelon, uh, it's actually a giant, uh, giant uh, sea turtle. Basically, it's a giant sea turtle. And this would be like your largest sea turtle. Give it some steroids, and pretty much you got Archelon. Now, Archelon with its features is basically it does have the shell uh, like all turtles do, but it wasn't really that much of a bony shell. It was pretty much like a, it wasn't really like a very hard shell that we actually see like in like on tortoises and in some uh, uh, water dwell water dwelling turtles, uh, some water dwelling turtles that actually do have really hard shells. Uh, basically, uh, Archelon's shell would actually kind of be more like a, kind of like a, a leathery or otherwise kind of a soft uh, type of uh, shell. So basically, it's a very soft shell, and pretty much it would actually be, and that's pretty much what I actually have because just considering in the in the in the oceans, you need to be uh, very smooth and fluid uh, throughout the water because if you have a bony type of shell. Uh, you're not going to move very gracefully. You're actually going to be really slow, and also the current could actually drag you further. And so that's pretty much where it could cause some problems. It's especially with a bony shell that you're pretty much, pretty much uh, putting a lot of weight into your body. And basically bone would actually weigh a pretty good amount uh, in the ocean. And so pretty much you're not going to use that. Because with Archelon... You need to have a smooth uh, type of shell in order to move gracefully through uh, the oceans. And so with with that, considering Archelon would actually be eating like invertebrates and some vertebrates, maybe it could go after some fishes, but basically it's still up in the air about that point. But it mostly would eat invertebrates of, of the oceans, basically like squid and jellyfish. And so that means it has no teeth, because considering that most... Uh, sea turtles don't have teeth because pretty much most pretty much a lot of turtles don't have teeth and so they actually just kind of eat up can eat uh, soft uh, soft uh, animals basically and so that's pretty much what they would what their diet consisted of now in the time where it actually lived it actually lived in a time where the oceans were the most dangerous so pretty much you got other marine reptiles that were really dangerous, like mosasaurs, uh, some plesiosaurs, and and uh, there were probably some ichthyosaurs that were still around, but basically they were pretty much on their last legs. And so, and also you got some giant, you got some big sharks, and also the fish are pretty much from like hell. You know, you wouldn't believe. You know, like Zyphactinus, that thing is just unbelievably. Like, you would think that this thing was actually, like, it came from the depths of, of hell and pretty much just uh, came out of, 
and just basically was brought into the Cretaceous. But even though it's still a fantastic animal to look at, because see, I like to compare its effectiveness with uh, with like a giant musky. You know, considering I'm from Wisconsin, we actually do have mus musky around here, so kind of like that. You know. But anyway, back to uh, Archelon. Archelon would actually be too big for the plesiosaurs to actually go after, considering that uh, they have very small teeth and also uh, their bodies are not really well designed to actually go after anything like that. Because you see, like the we see with the short neck uh, plesiosaurs, like Dolly Karenkops, which, which was around during that time, uh, probably wouldn't dare go after Archelon. The same thing with the Lasmosaurus. It probably wouldn't even dare go after an Archelon. It's because, you see, they don't have the body and also they don't have the skull uh, structure to go after really big things. Just because, you see, their teeth are actually designed to catch fish. And sli basically slippery prey. Basically fish, squid, and, you know, all that sorts of stuff. But the one... Uh, per but the one marine reptile that would actually fear the most is Mosasaurus. Because, you see, Mosasaurs were big enough to actually go after Archelon, and so that would actually be a point it would be a bad day for Archelon, considering that um, Mosasaurs uh, do have, do go after uh, larger prey items, and so they do actually need to be wary of Mosasaurs. And so probably what Archelon did is probably stick stick a little bit closer to the shallows. Considering that some of the other Mosasaurs are too small to go after uh, Archelon, so pretty much you're actually going to have to go towards where the shore is, because the only one that I actually fear is Tylosaurus. Tylosaurus was so huge that basically Archelon couldn't even dare go towards it, you know. And so pretty much uh, Archelon would probably stick closer to the shallows in order to actually survive, and pretty much. It could probably go after, considering that it probably did go towards the depths a little bit more to actually go after squid and and uh, some jellyfish. You know, it could actually probably do that. And just considering that it does have a very flexible shell, you might need to actually go down to the depths to hunt for your food. So probably the best time for Archelon to hunt is at night, and considering that uh, squid are very more are really active at night and also jellyfish are really active at night so that's how they actually uh, would go after their prey and anyhow with the the extinction of Archelon is basically this like what happened in the KPG extinction is basically a large asteroid hit the earth in the Gulf of Mexico caused numerous events uh, around the around the globe that pretty much actually uh, was pretty much the end of the dinosaurs and the large marine reptiles you know all that sorts of stuff you know and so Archelon just couldn't adapt to like the numerous things that were happening you know and so the ocean has a huge impact in terms of extinction that happens on land so too so that's a point of emphasis right there now let's actually talk about uh, the next uh, d animal that we're actually going to talk about it's a dinosaur that is very familiar to the public and basically this dinosaur is actually well known in the Jurassic Park slash world uh, franchise and we actually, and we see this one be considering to be mostly the antagonist uh, a lot in the films and it's a small predatory dinosaur that we all know and love and that is Velociraptor and here you go here's a, a plastic Velociraptor skeleton if any of you actually grew up in the 90s uh, like I did uh, this thing was always on the shelves like in bookstores and, uh, and all that sorts of stuff these things actually were like a uh, building dinosaur kits that you find in like um, bookstores uh, they had they came in like in like these containers that were shape of eggs and basically you just open them up and basically put your dinosaur together I had a Tyrannosaurus Rex, Stegosaurus, Velociraptor and Brachiosaurus so those were actually the ones that were pretty much most common and they did actually have like uh, I think I think they did have uh, Tyrannodon and like something else and I think uh, Micropachycephalosaurus I think it was but even though the the four the four main ones were basically Velociraptor, Tyrannosaurus Rex, uh, Brachiosaurus and Stegosaurus they didn't really have one for Triceratops and so anyway Velociraptor Velociraptor in Greek or Latin means swift thief 
and it's approximately six feet long and would have actually weighed under a hundred pounds and its height would actually be just under three feet so basically it's a small theropod dinosaur it's a small theropod dinosaur and of course this is a carnivore lived around 80 to 70 million years ago in Mongolian China and basically has the characteristics of basically of every dromaeosaur so basically Velociraptor belongs into the group of family of dinosaurs called drome dromaeosaurs which are also nicknamed the raptors and so during this time raptors are pretty much uh, very small and so they actually had these uh, distinct features uh, uh, very small but sharp teeth long claws on its hands and also the number one characteristic of a raptor basically in the dromaeosaurus is the large uh, foot claw now here this is a foot claw of, of a velociraptor and you can see how small this is this one's probably this one's this is not really the largest one uh, there are ones that can be larger than this. Some of them actually go over three inches. This one's actually just a little bit past two and a half inches. And so uh, this one is actually probably from a smaller raptor, but even though it is a it is a foot claw, and so and pretty much with the foot claws, what they did is basically they weren't used for uh, slashing. Because you see, a lot of people actually believe that uh, a lot of the raptors raptor dinosaurs did like the slashing technique like go jump on the back of the prey and actually just start slashing but there, there's a problem with that see on in the claw of in the foot claw basically you would think that like this basically right here is all bladed and very sharp and flat but even though yes the claw would actually be good enough to actually possibly for slashing but even though it's not its main use for so basically, considering it's a little bit rounded under here, so it's not really designed to actually uh, slash. It's actually designed to actually just stab. Because you see, if you because if you look at the evidence, is basically rap, probably a lot of raptors didn't do the slashing. They probably used them for stabbing, just basically just pushing in the claw and basically just aim right towards. Uh, the arteries and veins of the prey and basically let the prey bleed to death and basically the number one spot to actually go after is the neck because the neck has the jugular veins and also all those major arteries that you actually want to go after and also has the windpipe if it stabbed the windpipe it could suffocate the prey pretty easily and so that's concerning with Velociraptor's weaponry the prey animals for Velociraptor would actually be protoceratops, uh, smaller reptile, small reptiles, and even mammals, uh, and probably possibly amphibians. Maybe it could go after insects, considering it's a very small dinosaur. It could actually go after some insects, and uh, probably did actually feast it on uh, juveniles of uh, some other dinosaurs. And pretty much with the behavior standpoints of Velociraptor, we still don't know for sure. But even though like with all raptors, they probably did hunt in packs because they're very small and they probably need to go after larger prey to actually uh, keep the pack uh, fully fed. And so, and like there is, ev and pretty much uh, there is evidence of support that they did hunt protoceratops. And everybody knows the iconic fighting, fight to the dual um, uh, fossil find, where basically you have a velociraptor and a protoceratops locked in combat when they got fossilized where it has a velociraptor is kind of pinned down to the ground actually has one of its killing claws digging towards the neck of the protoceratops where the protoceratops is actually uh, grappling the arm of a velociraptor and the number one weapon for protoceratops is its beak because its beak could actually deliver a, pow a very crushing bite uh, for a Velociraptor could cause damage and basically that Velociraptor wouldn't have been able to use that arm uh, for very long at all and so 
these animals were buried alive uh, when they actually uh, became fossil when they actually started to become fossils. So pretty much they were locked into this position you know, for millions of years until it was discovered uh, in the in the 20th century. I know that for sure. I think it was between 1940 and 1970, if I remember correctly. It was around that time. So I think it was around that time because because it was during the time when uh, Mongolia, when American Museum of Natural History, uh, and uh, but even it was kind of around the last years of where the American Museum of Natural History did like expeditions in Mongolia and China, but even though that fossil was actually found in Mongolia. Velociraptor is very common in Mongolia. China's are actually kind of very common in Mongolia. But would they go after oviraptorids? They probably did they probably did go after oviraptorids, but not as often. They probably fed on their young, but not really going after the large ones, because they probably don't want to get too close uh, to an angry oviraptorid. Because pretty much like with oviraptorids Oviraptorids, they probably were aggressive uh, towards pre to Velociraptor, so I probably didn't take lightly to Velociraptor uh, very very well. So probably they didn't get along very well, and so uh, like and pretty much uh, there is evidence to actually support the Velociraptor probably did have feathers. Uh, there is an art. There is an radius or an ulna. If I, Radius or ulna that has been found, they actually have these like little dots uh, al aligned, and basically those were attachments of feathers. And so, Velociraptor actually had uh, basically uh, feathers that were almost like wings, but they couldn't fly necessarily because they were too heavy to do this. And so, what they were used for was probably to for steering. So they probably, probably when a Velociraptor is willing to ready to turn, they probably lifted one arm to actually turn uh, to the to the left, and then or otherwise maybe turn to the right, you know, all that sorts of stuff. So that's kind of pretty cool. And of course, Velociraptor, like all raptors, has a very has a big brain for its body size, so basically has good senses, good sense of smell, good sense of sight, and good sense of hearing. So that would actually be the one thing that that Velociraptor is really well known for, and also the speed is actually going to be very impressive. Velociraptor has very good speed, considering it has long legs, and so it also has a very light skeleton, so basically it could run very fast. But and so they probably ran really fast, probably pretty close to between probably between 30 to 40 miles per hour, and that's pretty fast. And with the harsh environment that it lived in like desert to forested areas uh, during the time. So it would actually be uh, around that time where it was kind of very harsh for animals to survive around that time. But even though they did survive and they actually uh, survived very well. And of course extinction of Velociraptor is basically that couldn't adapt to the new changes in, in the environment considering that because uh, you know maybe like the the climate got really really harsh where there maybe the desert has actually actually expanded and so that actually caused uh, like where it couldn't survive long droughts anymore and pretty much that like it's couldn't find any more habitat uh, to live even though some of them did live in the desert in the desert type of conditions they probably couldn't survive uh, for longer periods of drought and so that would actually be the number one reason why it couldn't that it went extinct is that it couldn't adapt to the new changes <clears throat> anyway that's it for now now this saturday will actually be a new answering questions episode so if you got a question about dinosaurs or any other prehistoric life feel free to email me at dinochris71 at gmail.com or otherwise go on my Facebook page, Prehistoric Facts with Dino Chris. Like the page, you can actually post your questions in the comments section on any Facebook post. But remember, keep your questions short and to the point. And also, you can follow me on Twitter at CSGRALL. That's my Twitter page. I post pretty cool stuff on there. Also, I'll take care of the people around you. And also, for younger people out there, make sure to listen to your parents, your teachers, and your guardians. Those are the best motivation you can have for a good education. It's very important to have a good education because with a good education, you get a good job in the future. All right, that's it for now. And I'll see you guys this Saturday.